an apartment or a flat is a self-contained housing unit that occupies only part of a building. Such a building may be called an apartment building, apartment house, block of flats, tower block, high-rise or, occasionally mansion block, especially if it consists of many apartments for rent. In Scotland it is often called a tenement, which has a pejorative connotation elsewhere. Apartments may be owned by an owner-occupier by leasehold tenure or rented by tenants. The term apartment is favoured in North America and also is the preferred term in Ireland. The term flat is commonly, but not exclusively, used in the United Kingdom, Singapore, Hong Kong and most Commonwealth nations. In Malaysian English, flat often denotes a housing block of lesser quality meant for lower income groups while apartment is more generic and may also include luxury condominiums. This usage has also been appearing in British English where apartment is used to denote expensive flats in exclusive and expensive residential areas in, for example, parts of London such as Belgravia and Hampstead. In Australian English, the term flat was traditionally used, but the term apartment is also frequently used, as is unit, short for home unit. Tenement law refers to the feudal basis of permanent property such as land or rents. It may be found combined as in mess swage or tenement to encompass all the land, buildings and other assets of a property. In the United States, some apartment dwellers own their own apartments either as co-ops, in which the residents own shares of a corporation that owns the building or development, or in condominiums, whose residents own their apartments and share ownership of the public spaces. Most apartments are in buildings designed for the purpose, but large older houses are sometimes divided into apartments. The word apartment denotes a residential unit or section in a building. In some locations, particularly the United States, the word connotes a rental unit owned by the building owner, and is not typically used for a condominium. In the UK, some flat owners own shares in the company that owns the freehold of the building as well as holding the flat under a lease. This is commonly known as a share of freehold flat. The freehold company has the right to collect annual ground rents from each of the flat owners in the building. The freeholder can also develop or sell the building, subject to the usual planning and restrictions that might apply. In some countries the word unit is a more general term referring to both apartments and rental business suites. The word is generally used only in the context of a specific building. For example, this building has three units, or I'm going to rent a unit in this building, but not I'm going to rent a unit somewhere. In Australia, a unit refers to flats, apartments or even semi-detached houses. Some buildings can be characterized as mixed-use buildings, meaning part of the building is for commercial, business, or office use, usually on the first floor or first couple of floors, and there are one or more apartments in the rest of the building, usually on the upper floors. Types and characteristics. In some parts of the world, the word apartment refers to a new purpose built self contained residential unit in a building, whereas the word flat means a converted self contained unit in an older building. An industrial, warehouse, or commercial space converted to an apartment is commonly called a loft, although some modern lofts are built by design. An apartment consisting of the top floor of a high apartment building can be called a penthouse. Studio apartment, the smallest self-contained apartments, are referred to as studio, efficiency or bachelor apartments in the U.S., or these usually consist of a large single main room which acts as the living, dining room and bedroom combined and usually also includes kitchen facilities, with a separate smaller bathroom. A bed sit is a UK variant on single room accommodation which involves bathroom facilities shared with other bed sits. Moving up from the bachelor's efficiencies are one-bedroom apartments, in which one bedroom is separate from the rest of the apartment. Then there are two-bedroom, three-bedroom, etc. apartments. Small apartments often have only one entrance. Large apartments often have two entrances, perhaps a door in the front and another in the back. Depending on the building design, the entrance doors may be directly to the outside or to a common area inside such as a hallway. Garden apartment, the term garden apartment is variously defined, following regional practices. In some locales, 
The garden apartment complex consists of low-rise apartment buildings built with landscaped grounds surrounding them. The apartment buildings are often arranged around courtyards that are open at one end. Such a garden apartment shares some characteristics of a townhouse, each apartment has its own building entrance, or shares that entrance via a staircase and lobby that adjoins other units immediately above and or below it. Unlike a townhouse, each apartment occupies only one level. Such garden apartment buildings are almost never more than three stories high, since they typically don't have elevators lifts. However, the first garden apartment buildings in New York, USA, built in the early 1900s, were constructed five stories high. Some garden apartment buildings place a one-car garage under each apartment. The interior grounds are often landscaped. In other locales, a garden apartment is a unit built at or below grade or at ground level. The implication is that there is a view or direct access to a garden from the apartment, but this is not necessarily the case. In most West Coast cities in the United States, due to the need for resisting earthquakes at a low building cost, these low-rise apartments are mostly built of wooden frames with thin plasterboard-based exterior and interior dry walls, despite that they can be up to three to four levels. Secondary suite, when part of a house is converted for the ostensible use of a landlord's family member, the unit may be known as an in-law apartment or granny flat, though these created units are often occupied by ordinary renters rather than family members. In Canada these suites are commonly located in the basements of houses and are therefore normally called basement suites or mother-in-law suites. Maisonette Maisonette typically refers to larger apartments spreading across two or more floors of an apartment building connected by staircases within the maisonette. In the UK, the term maisonette may be used to distinguish dwellings which have their own entrance independent from the rest of a multi-story block, as opposed to flats which are usually reached through shared entrance doors, stairs or corridors. This definition of maisonette includes smaller maisonettes occupying a single floor of a block, including designs also known as cottage flats and tyneside flats, two-story flat, in Milwaukee vernacular architecture, a Polish flat is an existing small house or cottage that has been lifted up to accommodate the creation of a new basement floor housing a separate apartment, then set down again, thus becoming a modest two-story flat. Communal apartment, in Russia, a communal apartment is a room with a shared kitchen and bath. A typical arrangement is a cluster of five or so room apartments with a common kitchen and bathroom and separate front doors, occupying a floor in a pre-revolutionary mansion. Traditionally a room is owned by the government and assigned to a family on a semi-permanent basis. Facilities, apartments may be available for rent furnished with furniture or unfurnished into which a tenant moves in with their own furniture. Service departments, intended to be convenient for shorter stays, include soft furnishings and kitchen utensils, and maid service. Laundry facilities may be found in a common area accessible to all the tenants in the building, or each apartment may have its own facilities. Depending on when the building was built and the design of the building, utilities such as water, heating, and electricity may be common for all the apartments in the building or separate for each apartment and billed separately to each tenant. Outlets for connection to telephones are typically included in apartments. Telephone service is optional and is practically always billed separately from the rent payments. Cable television and similar amenities are extra also. Parking space, S, air conditioner, and extra storage space may or may not be included with an apartment. Rental leases often limit the maximum number of people who can reside in each apartment. On or around the ground floor of the apartment building, a series of mailboxes are typically kept in a location accessible to the public and, thus, to the mail carrier too. Every unit typically gets its own mailbox with individual keys to it. Some very large apartment buildings with a full-time staff may take mail from the mailman and provide mail sorting service. Near the mailboxes or some other location accessible by outsiders, there may be a buzzer for each individual unit. In smaller apartment buildings such as two or three flats, or even four flats, rubbish is often disposed of in trash containers similar to those used at houses. In larger buildings, rubbish is often collected in a common trash bin or dumpster. 
for cleanliness or minimizing noise. Many lessors will place restrictions on tenants regarding keeping pets in an apartment. Property classes In the United States, properties are typically put into one of four property classes. Each class of properties has a letter grade. These grades are used to help investors and real estate brokers speak a common language so they can understand a property's characteristics and condition quickly. They are as follows. Class A properties are luxury units. They are usually less than 10 years old and are often new, upscale apartment buildings. Average rents are high, and they are generally located in desirable geographic areas. White-collar workers live in them and are usually renters by choice. Class B properties can be 10 to 25 years old. They are generally well maintained and have a middle class tenant base of both white and blue collar workers. Some are renters by choice, and others by necessity. Class C properties were built within the last 30 to 40 years. They generally have blue collar and low to moderate income tenants, and the rents are below market. This is where you'll find many tenants that are renters for life. On the other hand, some of their tenants are just starting out. And as they get better jobs, they work their way up the rental scale. Class D properties are where you'll find many Section 8 in the U.S. or government-subsidized housing tenants. They are generally positioned in lower socioeconomic areas. History, Rome, in ancient Rome, the Insuli were large apartment buildings where the lower and middle classes of Romans dwelled. The floor at ground level was used for taberners, shops and businesses with living space on the higher floors. Ancient Roman Insuli in Rome and other imperial cities reached up to ten and more stories, some with more than two hundred stairs. Several emperors, beginning with Augustus, attempted to establish limits of 20 a euro 25 a.m. for multi-story buildings, but met with only limited success. The lower floors were typically occupied by either shops or wealthy families, while the upper stories were rented out to the lower classes. Surviving Xiantius papyri indicate that seven-story buildings even existed in provincial towns, such as in 3rd century Hermopolis in Roman Egypt. Egypt, during the medieval Arabic Islamic period, the Egyptian capital of Fustot housed many high-rise residential buildings, some seven stories tall that could reportedly accommodate hundreds of people. In the 10th century, al Dasi described them as resembling minarets, and stated that the majority of Fustot's population lived in these multi-story apartment buildings, each one housing over 200 people. In the 11th century, Nasir Kyur's Raw described some of these apartment buildings rising up to 14 stories, with roof gardens on the top story complete with ox-drawn water wheels for irrigating them. By the 16th century, the current Cairo also had high-rise apartment buildings, where the two lower floors were for commercial and storage purposes and the multiple stories above them were rented out to tenants. England, in the late 19th and early 20th century, the concept of the flat was slow to catch on amongst the English middle classes. Those who lived in these flats were assumed to be adaptable and different. In London, everyone who could afford it occupied an entire house a euro even if a small one. During the last quarter of the 19th century, ideas began to change. Both urban growth and the increase in population meant that more imaginative housing concepts were going to be needed if the middle and upper classes were to maintain a pied de terre in the capital. The traditional London townhouse was becoming increasingly expensive to maintain. Especially for bachelors and unmarried women, the idea of renting a modern mansion flat came increasingly into vogue. The first mansion flats in England were, Albert Mansions, which were developed by Philip Flower and designed by James Knowles. These flats were constructed between 1867 and 1870, and were one of the earliest blocks of flats to fill the vacant spaces of the newly laid out Victoria Street at the end of the 1860s. Today, only a sliver of the building remains, next to the Victoria Palace Theatre. Albert Mansions was really 19 separate houses, each with a staircase serving one flat per floor. Its tenants included Lord Alfred Tennyson, whose connections with the developer's family were long-standing. Philip Flower's son first Baron Cyril Flower Battersea, developed most of the mansion blocks on Prince of Wales Drive, London. Albert Hall Mansions, designed by Richard Norman Shaw in 1876. 
because this was of a new type, risks were reduced as much as possible, each block was planned as a separate project with the building of each separate part contingent on the successful occupation of every flat in the previous block. The gamble paid off and the scheme was a success. In London, by the time of the 2011 census, 52% of all homes were flats. Scotland In Scotland, the term tenement lacks the pejorative connotations it carries elsewhere, and refers simply to any block of flats sharing a common central staircase and lacking an elevator, particularly those constructed before 1919. Tenements were, and continue to be, inhabited by a wide range of social classes and income groups. During the 19th century tenements became the predominant type of new housing in Scotland's industrial cities, although they were very common in the old town in Edinburgh from the 15th century where they reached 10 or 11 storeys high and in one case 14 storeys. Built of sandstone or granite, Scottish tenements are usually 3 to 5 storeys in height, with 2 to 4 flats on each floor. Scottish tenements are constructed in terraces of tenements, and each entrance within a block is referred to as a close or stair a euro, both referring to the shared passageway to the individual flats. Flights of stairs and landings are generally designated common areas, and residents traditionally took turns to sweep clean the floors, and in Aberdeen in particular, took turns to make use of shared laundry facilities in the back green. It is now more common for cleaning of the common ways to be contracted out through a managing agent or factor. Tenements today are bought by a wide range of social types, including young professionals, older retiring people, and by absentee landlords, often for rental to students after they leave halls of residence managed by their institution. The National Trust for Scotland Tenement House Museum in Glasgow offers an insight into the lifestyle of tenement dwellers. Many multi-storey tower blocks were built in the UK after the Second World War. A number of these are being demolished and replaced with low-rise buildings or housing estates known in Scotland as housing schemes, often modern interpretations of the tenement. In Glasgow, where Scotland's highest concentration of tenement dwellings can be found, the urban renewal projects of the 1950s, 1960s and 1970s brought an end to the city's slums which had primarily consisted of older tenements built in the early 19th century in which large extended families would live together in cramped conditions. They were replaced by high-rise blocks that, within a couple of decades, became notorious for crime and poverty. The Glasgow Corporation made many efforts to improve the situation, most successfully with the City Improvement Trust, which cleared the slums of the old town, replacing them with what they thought of as a traditional high street which remains an imposing townscape national government help was given following World War I when Housing Acts sought to provide homes fit for heroes. Garden suburb areas, based on English models, such as Knightswood were set up. These proved too expensive, so a modern tenement, three stories high, slate-roofed and built of reconstituted stone, was reintroduced and a slum clearance program initiated to clear areas such as the Calton and the Garngad. Post-Second World War, more ambitious plans, known as the Bruce Plan, were made for the complete evacuation of slums to modern mid-rise housing developments on the outskirts of the city. However, central government refused to fund the plans, preferring instead to depopulate the city to a series of new towns again. Economic considerations meant that many of the planned new town amenities were never built in these areas. These housing estates, known as schemes, came therefore to be widely regarded as unsuccessful. Many, such as Castle Milk, were just dormitories well away from the center of the city with no amenities, such as shops and public houses. High-rise living too started off with bright ambition, the Moss Heights are still desirable, but fell prey to later economic pressure. Many of the later tower blocks were poorly designed and cheaply built and their anonymity caused some social problems. In 1970 a team from Strathclyde University demonstrated that the old tenements had been basically sound, and could be given new life with replumbing with kitchens and bathroom. The corporation acted on this principle for the first time in 1973 at the Old Swan Corner, Perlock Shores. Thereafter, housing action areas were set up to renovate so-called slums. Later, privately owned tenements benefited from government help in stone cleaning, 
revealing a honey-colored sandstone behind the presumed gray tenemental facades. The policy of tenement demolition is now considered to have been short-sighted, wasteful and largely unsuccessful. Many of Glasgow's worst tenements were refurbished into desirable accommodation in the 1970s and 1980s and the policy of demolition is considered to have destroyed fine examples of a universally admired architectural style. The Glasgow Housing Association took ownership of the housing stock from the City Council on March 7, 2003, and has begun a £96 million clearance and demolition program to clear and demolish many of the high-rise flats. Yemen High-rise apartment buildings were built in the Yemeni city of Shibam in the 16th century. The houses of Shibam are all made out of mud bricks, but about 500 of them are tower houses, which rise 5 to 11 stories high, with each floor having one or two apartments. Shibam has been called Manhattan of the Desert. Some of them were over 100 feet high, thus being the tallest mud brick apartment buildings in the world to this day. United States and Canada in the 10th century, the Shikone people constructed large, multi-room dwellings, some comprising more than 900 rooms, in the Caco Canyon area of what is now northwest New Mexico. In 1839, the first New York City tenement was built, housing mainly poor immigrants. The tenements were breeding grounds for outlaws, juvenile delinquents, and organized crime. Mark Raker journalist Jacob Ree wrote in How the Other Half Lives. The New York tough may be ready to kill where his London brother would do little more than scowl. Yet, as a general thing he is less repulsively brutal in looks. Here again the reason may be the same, the breed is not so old. A few generations more in the slums, and all that will be changed. Tenements were also known for their price gouging rent. How the other half lives notes one tenement district. Blind man's alley bear its name for a reason. Until little more than a year ago its dark burrows harbored a colony of blind beggars, tenants of a blind landlord, old Daniel Murphy, whom every child in the ward knows, if he never heard of the President of the United States. Old Dan made a big fortune, he told me once $400,000, out of his alley and the surrounding tenements, only to grow blind himself in extreme old age, sharing in the end the chief hardship of the wretched beings whose lot he had stubbornly refused to better that he might increase his wealth. Even when the Board of Health at last compelled him to repair and clean up the worst of the old buildings, under threat of driving out the tenants and locking the doors behind them, the work was accomplished against the old man's angry protests. He appeared in person before the Board to argue his case, and his argument was characteristic. I have made my will, he said. My monument stands waiting for me in Calvary. I stand on the very brink of the grave, blind and helpless, and now do you want me to build and get skinned, skinned? These people are not fit to live in a nice house. Let them go where they can, and let my house stand. In spite of the genuine anguish of the appeal, it was downright amusing to find that his anger was provoked less by the anticipated waste of luxury on his tenants than by distrust of his own kind, the builder. He knew intuitively what to expect. The result showed that Mr. Murphy had gauged his tenants correctly. The Dakota was one of the first luxury apartment buildings in New York City. The majority, however, remained tenements. Many reformers, such as Upton Sinclair and Jacob Reilly, pushed for reforms in tenement dwellings. As a result in 1901, New York State passed a law called the New York State Tenement House Act to improve the conditions in tenements. More improvements followed. In 1949, President Harry S. Truman signed the Housing Act of 1949 to clean slums and reconstruct housing units for the poor. Some significant developments in architectural design of apartment buildings came out of the 1950s and 60s. Among them were groundbreaking designs in the 860 to 880 Lakeshore Drive apartments, New Century Guild, Marina City and Lake Point Tower. Apartment buildings are multi-story buildings where three or more residences are contained within one structure. In more urban areas, apartments close to the downtown area have the benefits of proximity to jobs and or public transportation. However, prices per square foot are often much higher than in suburban areas. 
The distinction between rental apartments and condominiums is that while rental buildings are owned by a single entity and rented out to many, condominiums are owned individually, while their owners still pay a monthly or yearly fee for building upkeep. Condominiums are often leased by their owner as rental apartments. A third alternative, the cooperative apartment building, acts as a corporation with all of the tenants as shareholders of the building. Tenants in cooperative buildings do not own their apartment, but instead own a proportional number of shares of the entire cooperative. As in condominiums, cooperators pay a monthly fee for building upkeep. Co-ops are common in cities such as New York, and have gained some popularity in other larger urban areas in the U.S. In the United States, tenement is a label usually applied to the less expensive, more basic rental apartment buildings in older sections of large cities. Many of these apartment buildings are walk-ups without an elevator, and some have shared bathing facilities, though this is becoming less common. The slang term dingbat is used to describe cheap urban apartment buildings from the 1950s and 1960s with unique and often wacky four-section ladders to differentiate themselves within a full block of apartments. They are often built on stilts, and with parking underneath. Apartments were popular in Canada, particularly in urban centers like Vancouver, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, and Hamilton, Ontario in the 1950s to 1970s. By the 1980s, many multi-unit buildings were being constructed as condominiums instead of apartments, and both are now very common. In Toronto and Vancouver, high-rise apartments and condominiums have been spread around the city giving even the major suburbs a skyline. Australia In Australia, the terms unit, flat, and apartment are largely used interchangeably. Newer high-rise buildings are more often marketed as apartments, as the term flats carries colloquial connotations. The term condominium or condo is rarely used in Australia despite attempts by developers to market it. A high-rise apartment building is commonly referred to as a residential tower, apartment tower, or block of flats in Australia. Apartment buildings in Australia are typically managed by a body corporate or owner's corporation in which owners pay a monthly fee to provide for common maintenance and help cover future repair. Many apartments are owned through strata title. Due to legislation, Australian banks will either apply loan-to-value ratios of over 70% for strata titles of less than 50 square metres. The big four Australian banks will not loan at all for strata titles of less than 30 square metres. These are usually classified as studio apartments or student accommodation. Australian legislation enforces a minimum 2.4m floor ceiling height which differentiates apartment buildings from office buildings. In Australia, Apartment living is a popular lifestyle choice for dinky, yuppies, university students and more recently empty nesters, however, rising land values in the big cities in recent years has seen an increase in families living in apartments. In Melbourne and Sydney apartment living is sometimes not a matter of choice for the many socially disadvantaged people who often end up in public housing towers. Australia has a relatively recent history in apartment buildings. Terrace houses were the early response to density development, though the majority of Australians lived in fully detached houses. Apartments of any kind were legislated against in the Parliament of Queensland as part of the Undue Subdivision of Land Prevention Act 1885. The earliest apartment buildings were in the major cities of Sydney and Melbourne as the response to fast-rising land values. Melbourne mansions on Collins Street, Melbourne built in 1906 for mostly wealthy residents is believed by many to be the earliest. Today the oldest surviving self-contained apartment buildings are in the St Kilda area including the Faulkner Mansions, Majestic Mansions and the Canterbury. Kingsclare, built in 1912 is believed to be the earliest apartment building in Sydney and still survives. During the interwar years, apartment building continued in Inner Melbourne, Sydney and in Brisbane. Post-World War II, with the Australian dream apartment buildings went out of vogue and flats were seen as accommodation only for the poor. Walk-up flats of two to three stories however were common in the middle suburbs of cities for lower income groups. The main exceptions were Sydney and the Gold Coast, Queensland where apartment development continued for more than half a century. 
in Sydney a limited geography and highly sought after waterfront views made apartment living socially acceptable. While on the Gold Coast views of the ocean, proximity to the beach and a large tourist population made apartments a popular choice. Since the 1960s, these cities maintained much higher population densities than the rest of Australia through the acceptance of apartment buildings. In other cities apartment building was almost solely restricted to public housing. Public housing in Australia was common in the larger cities, particularly in Melbourne where a huge number of high-rise housing commission flats were built between the 1950s and 1970s by successive governments as part of an urban renewal program. Areas affected included Fitzroy, Flemington, Collingwood, Carlton, Richmond and Prahran. Similar projects were run in Sydney's lower socio-economic areas like Redfern. In the 1980s, modern apartment buildings sprang up in riverside locations in Brisbane and Perth. In Melbourne in the 1990s a trend began for apartment buildings without the requirement of spectacular views. As a continuation of the gentrification of the inner city, a fashion became New York loft-style apartments and a large stock of old warehouses and old abandoned office buildings in and around the CBD became the target of developers. The trend of adaptive reuse extended to conversion of old churches and schools. Similar warehouse conversions and gentrification began in Brisbane suburbs such as Tenerife, Queensland and Fortitude Valley and in Sydney in areas such as Ultimo. As supply of buildings for conversion ran out, reproduction and postmodern style apartments followed. The popularity of these apartments also stimulated a boom in the construction of new high rise apartment buildings in inner cities. This was particularly the case in Melbourne, which was fueled by official planning policies, making the CBD the fastest growing, population wise, in the country. Apartment building in the Melbourne metropolitan area has also escalated with the advent of the Melbourne 2030 planning policy. Urban renewal areas like Docklands, South Bank, St Kilda Road and Port Melbourne are now predominantly apartments. There has also been a sharp increase in the amount of student apartment buildings in areas such as Carlton in Melbourne. Despite their size, other smaller cities including Canberra, Darwin, Townsville, Kent, Newcastle, Wollongong, Adelaide and Geelong have begun building apartments in the 2000s. Today, residential buildings Eureka Tower and Q1 are the tallest in the country. In many cases, apartments in inner city areas of the major cities can cost much more than much larger houses in the outer suburbs. There are Australian cities, such as Gold Coast, Queensland, which are inhabited predominantly by apartment dwellers. Advantages, high security, some apartment buildings have high levels of security. For example, to enter a high security building, a person must validate their smart card at the main entrance. In some apartments, while at the lift, the smart card would be used again to be able to press the button for lift access. Finally, the person walks to their apartment and uses their key to unlock the entrance door. This two or three tier security will, in most cases, prevent home invasions and theft. Some buildings may have a doorman to guard the premises. Many middle and upper tier apartments have video phones, whereby residents can see and verify who is at the main entrance before allowing access to the building. Convenience Owning or renting an apartment is also more convenient than owning a house as the general maintenance and landscaping is taken care of by the owner or body corporate. This is particularly the case in regions with climate extremes, such as the long and snowy winters in the Nordic countries of Northern Europe and most of Canada where there is much snow clearing work for house residents. Real estate investment, the total cost for the construction of an apartment is much less than the cost invested in the construction of a single house. When the cost of a single unit in the apartment is compared to a single house of the same dimension, the difference in cost is very large. The cost of land is shared by all the owners of the apartment. But the price at which the flats are sold is not exactly proportional to the difference, but the real estate makes a big share of profits because the price at which the flats are sold are almost equal to the price of the houses in specific areas of the city. In this way apartment construction is an advantage to the real estate. Disposable income, 
in Scandinavian countries apartment dwelling and renting through non-profit housing cooperatives is commonplace. Apartment users are allowed to modify the interior of the apartment to suit their wishes. Often the extended families have a shared holiday house in the countryside. The investment in real estate for a family is reduced leading to greater disposable income for quality of life. Disadvantages, energy use, buildings between four and seven stories have a lower energy footprint per M2 than do high rises greater than seven stories. There seems to be a trade-off with many other variables in a life cycle analysis, which would suggest that seven stories is the optimum density in T1 urban areas, the city of Paris being an example. Buildings not requiring lifts are normally more energy efficient. Note, this is dependent on the particular country's accessibility requirements. Climate factors, high-rise buildings cast a significant shadow over nearby buildings, reducing solar energy harvesting. They also cast shadows over public spaces, reducing their amenity value, and these spaces are a very valuable resource in mid-density cities. Wind turbulence can also be a significant problem at ground level if design provisions are not made. The prevailing cooling breezes in summer can be disrupted for nearby buildings also. Noise insulation and privacy issues, in most west coast cities in the United States, due to the need for resisting earthquakes at a low building cost, low-rise apartments, up to three to four levels, are mostly built of wooden frames with thin plasterboard-based interior dry walls with poor noise insulation standard. As a result, it is often possible to hear neighbors clearly, sometimes well enough to hear conversations or snoring at night, as dramatized in the movie Office Space by the neighboring characters talking through their apartment walls directly. See also Apartment Hotel, Apartment Ratings, Basement Apartment, Insuli, an apartment building in ancient Rome, Kamienica in Poland, list of house types, penthouse apartment, pied de terre, public housing, studio apartment, tenement, tower block, triple decker, references. External links, the dictionary definition of apartment at Wikshinery, media related to apartment blocks at Wikimedia Commons.